social media's number one platform for spine health education and surgery. Join with us now. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another great version of ADR Support and Education, one of the biggest Facebook groups on for spine health. I have the amazing Professor Trapiano from France, and we're just going to do a nice little discussion on SI joints, uh, the fusion of the whole device. We're going to show you some implants, and then we're even going to move over to showing you some more implants and to degeneration and, and showing how some fusion devices work and what they're made out of and their materials. So we're going to really lump it in real quick real fast and I think everybody will enjoy it. Dr. Trapiano, how are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> you, you look fantastic this morning. Well, morning for me, uh, it's what, 6 o'clock p.m. for you? 6 yeah. o'clock p.m. for you? Yeah. Okay, so um, let's just kick it off right now. We have, we're going to first do a nice little presentation. We'll show an x-ray of a SI joint fusion and then kind of go from there. Okay, so uh, you know that SI joint act to dissipate stress. It absorbs vibrations shaking the whole body when heals heal hit the ground during walking. You know to be aware that SI joint is a stress absorber. But I don't know if you know that SI joint pain prevalence is around 15% of the low back pain population. Diagnosis is very difficult despite the numerous tests available. Function is complex and you have to be aware that SI joint and symphysis pubis are closely linked functionally to the hip joint. That SI joint affects and gets affected by movement of trunk and lower extremities. Largest actual joint in the body is the SI joint. Mm. It is the most larger joint in the body. The reason why it's difficult to do arthrodesis, complete arthrodesis from it, is the SI joint is capable of doing L5 pain, like sciatica, but SI joint is very deep in the in the pelvis and is surrounded by ligaments and muscles and receives innervation from L4, L5 to, to S4. That's the reason why this is very, very rich region for pain. Diagnosis and treatment of sacroiliac joint dysfunction is poorly defined in the literature. There are significant extra-articular pains related to the numerous ligaments uh, around the, 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 the sacroiliac joint that underestimate the prevalence of sacroiliac joint region pain. Most of the time we observe that SI joint pain occurs sometimes in patients with ALIF or EDR in L5-S1 level. This lobar region tends to modify the balance between the trunk and the pelvis and this is the reason why sometimes it's very long and difficult to adapt to a new implant like this replacement or even with ALIF that could explain some pain that could explain some pain in the lumbar pain in the lumbar region but also pain in the in the in the lower limb SI joint pain is difficult to analyze because the clinical manifestation of the SI joint are very variable. In fact, the pain can be located everywhere in the lumbar pain and in the, in the lumbar region, sorry, in the buttock, on the lateral part of the hip, in the inguinal fold, but it can be also manifest itself as pain in the lower limb, which can suggest a sciatica. Diagnosis is difficult despite numerous provocative maneuvers and most of the time the maneuvers are, p are positive but it's difficult to know if the, the, the pain is coming from the SI joint. The most relevant approach is an intra-articular injection. This injection serves as a dual purpose, relieving pain and confirming diagnosis of SI joint pain if there is an improvement of symptoms. The injection should be repeated after two months if the, treat if the pain recurs. If the pain returns again after two months period, surgical intervention could be interesting to alleviate the pain and must be considered in some patient. So in my experience, I'm using this device is a, I'm, I'm trying to, do you, I think, do you see it? I see it well, yeah. This is a triangular shape implant and we use three of them, white triangle shape implant because it's more stable in, in this articulation. It's a, this is a white surface and um, sometimes the, mo the, mo the movement in the SI joint is uh, Notation and counter notation. That is like a small rotation and translation. And the best way to stabilize the, 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 the joint is to use this triangle shape implant. It's better for me than only screws. But there are different techniques using uh, used to, 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 to operate the, the SI joint pain. 
and most of the time this kind of surgery is efficient and uh, we can give you an example of what I did on one of my patients. Uh, Jamie, you can show the image if you want. This is the story of a patient. I operated him um, two years ago with um, an hybrid construct with uh, fusion and disc replacement. It was fine during two years and then after that he, he was complained about um, estrogen paint on the right side and also on the left side and I did the uh, injection diagnosis and uh, for uh, to alleviate the pain and it was very improved by uh, the, the, the injection and the pain recurs after one mouth the first injection and two months after the second injection so I decided to use the, the, the surgery I showed with the implant and I did it and after that it was completely relieved really of pain and now he's very, uh, very happy of the surgery. We don't see the don't see the images. You don't? No. I'll get him to edit this out. We don't share the screen. No. I, I, it's weird because it's showing on mine. I don't, I don't know why. How about now? Yes or no? No, I don't see it. Hmm. Now it's you. How about now? No, not yet. <clears throat> why isn't this sharing? It says it's showing around my side. I don't. I did the same thing I did before. No. There we go. There we go. Yeah, you see here the implant, we use usually three implants in the SI joint just to stabilize perfectly the, the, the joint. And this patient is very happy nowadays for with this surgery. Now it is one year follow up and no more pain and treating the, the right side alleviate the pain on the left side. Now it has no more pain on the left side. I don't know why, but this is sometimes it's a bit complicated to understand the, the pain in the on the pelvis. It also looks like the, he did a prior surgery with you. He looks like you got a pro disc at a four five, and then a few. Yeah, he had a pro disc at four five and uh, a lift in uh, L five S one. But he had um, just a, a small problem with the, in the, the pro disc because when he stand up the first time, he feel uh, he felt um, a pain and he did a fracture of the super end plate of uh, L five. And so there was a subsidence of the of the processes. And what I did, I I, I treated the, the patient with some device and cement. This is uh, what we call um, spine jack. Spine jack just to reduce the lifting of the processes, the subsidence. And then uh, I left the processes uh, in the good place. And nowadays uh, the processes is moving without any kind of revision. Can you explain the, the difference to the audience? Because spine jack is, is a relatively new type of term terminology uh, between spine jack and, and cement spine cement yeah i will show you what this is this patek this is a spine jack you see you see there inside there is a cement white is a cement and in blue is a spine jack spine jack help to reduce the fracture we use it to reduce the fracture in case of osteoporosis or uh, in case of every kind of fracture we use it to reduce the fracture and to do and we use cement like this and you you've had great success with that device because i know when we talk you, you know you speak very highly of the spine jack and i think it also works with uh when we see some osteolysis or uh some other issues going on where there's a little decay in the bone correct i use it yeah i use it in some case of osteolysis in uh, with the esp for example yeah and it, it works really well correct yeah. yeah so that's i mean there's always there's always options and we're always trying to figure it out and and uh you know chabiano i think was uh, was one of the first to adopt the spine jack and and i know a lot of other surgeons are are using it because of his lead on that you've kind of been instrumental and and uh i know the public definitely definitely agrees but let's go ahead and uh move on to some of the other devices you have there uh, I know well, we're going to basically show some cervical implants for fusion as well, some A-lifts, and hopefully we can... This is a You see, the, this is a, a cage for a lift. Right. You see, there is hole here to put screws inside to stabilize the implant. And that is that is called a standalone A-lift, correct? Standalone A-lift, yeah. Yeah. So it's got uh, titanium on the top and peak on the bottom, and the titanium basically... It's a titanium it coating, you see? Let me check here. This yep. The titanium coating just to improve the bone ingrowth when we, we put it inside the, 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 the level. Yeah, and then you also have an implant that uh, you helped create with a company, correct? Yeah, but it's a cervical one, what is it? Let me check. Uh, okay. yeah. yeah, that's nice. So that's also peak with titanium coating, correct? It's a peak implant for cervical. So one thing to, to tell our, our folks, you know, 
The reason why Peak has used plastic is basically what it is, is it's the modulus of elasticity, correct? Okay. So Peak acts just the same similar response as natural bone. So I think that's why Peak has always been so popular. You know, when I was in the spine sales and Peak basically came out when I was, you know, pretty much new doing cases and, uh, you know, it's kind of really taken off. Obviously, we figured out there's some issues with it because of the bone and growth doesn't work as well without the titanium. But I know with the titanium, it works fantastically well. And then let's talk a little bit about um, BMP. I know that's a, the product that you use for fusion and, and you know, our group knows that that works the best because a lot of the surgeons use it out there and and but many times depending on the hospital they won't use bmp but you've been using bmp for a long time correct yeah more than 20 years now when the first time we are, we are the first in france using bmp for is it off label in france as well as you i know you know united states it's used off label the four fusion is it the same with in france yeah, it's the same, but we're using it for it's half label in the cervical, but not only for the not in lumbar, not for the limb, etc. But there was a bad uh, advertising on a BMP during it was t ten years ago. It was a bad advertising, bad, bad, a very bad advertising on BMP due to a, a bad relationship between one guy and another one. <laughs> And, you know, and it's unfortunate we see that, you know, quite happen quite a bit in this business and it should really always be about patient care. And that's why, you know, I'm always so fond of Dr. Trapiano because, he, you know, he puts the patient first and makes sure that the products that he uses is, is, is standard, you know, that it works the best. So I, you know, I greatly appreciate them. Is there anything else you need to talk about today, Dr. Trapiano? No, I don't know what to do if you need more information. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's been a great interview. We've kept it short and sweet, and I'm sure the uh, the group will love it because I know they've been waiting this for quite some time. Dr. Trapiano, it's always a pleasure, and I wish you a great evening. Thank you. Have a good evening, too. Bye. Bye-bye.